Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss endpoint security profiles and how to apply security profiles to endpoints. We will start with defining what is endpoint security profile, what endpoint security profile types are, how to create endpoint security profile, how to apply security profiles to endpoints, and how to verify endpoint security profile with basic troubleshooting and verification. Cortex XDR provides default security profiles that you can use out of the box to immediately begin protecting your endpoints from threats, while securing security rules enable you to block or allow files to run on your endpoint security profiles help you customize and reuse settings across different groups of endpoints. When the Cortex XDR agent detects behavior that matches or will defined in your security policy, the Cortex XDR agent applies the security profile that is attached to the rule for further inspection. As you see in the screen, Cortex XDR comes with default security profiles that you can use for creating a default security policy that comes out of the box and you can start using it for all the registered endpoints. You can use that for the Windows platform, the Mac OS platform, the Linux platform, and the Android platform. And basically there are five types of security profiles. So we just click here to see the types that we have. We do have the exploit security profiles, malware restrictions, agent settings, and exceptions. Just briefly about each of them. The exploit profiles, those are the profiles that block that tends to exploit system flaws in browser and in the operating system, for example. Exploit profiles help protect against exploit kits, illegal code execution, and other attempts to exploit process and system vulnerabilities. They are supported for Windows, Mac, Linux platform. The second type is the malware profiles. The malware profiles basically protects against the execution of malware, including trojans, viruses, worms, and gray worms. Uh, they serve two main purposes. Uh, the first one is to define how to treat behavior common with malware, such as ransomware or script-based attacks. And the second one is to define how to treat known malware and unknown files. These profiles, the malware profiles, they are supported for all four platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. Then after that, we look here at the restrictions. So the restriction profiles limit where executables can run on an endpoint. For example, you can restrict files from running from specific local folders or from removable media. So the restriction profile is supported only for Windows platform. Then comes after that the agent settings profile. Those profiles enable you to customize settings that apply to Cortex XDR agents, such as the agent auto upgrade and the disk space quota for long retention, for example. And for Mac and Windows platform, you can also Additionally, customize user interface options for the Cortex XDR console, such as the accessibility and notification for the console. These support these profiles, the agent setting profiles, they are supported for all platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux, and Android. The last type of security profile is the exceptions. The exception profile or the exception security profiles override the security policy to allow a process or file to run on an endpoint to disable a specific BTP rule, behavior threat protection rule, to allow a non-digital signer and to import exceptions from the Cortex XDR support team. These profiles, the exception profiles, they are supported for Windows, Mac, and Linux platforms. This is how the default out-of-the-box profile will, will look like. And those can be deployed and applied for the registered endpoints. Next. After demonstrating what the profiles look like and the types of profile, we will go with a scenario where we can configure a new security profile, then populate a security policy that have the security profile and apply this to an endpoint. In order for us to better understand how security profiles work, let's look at their operation by using or by demonstrating a use case. In this example, we have a use case to add a security profile and populate the security profile or profiles to a security rule. So in this example, we will demonstrate the following scenario where we are going to create first a malware security profile for Windows platform that meets the below requirement. And then we will create a new agent setting profile for Windows platform that meets the below requirement. Then we're gonna populate a new security policy that will have those two security profiles with the below requirement as well. In order to do so, we will go to the XDR console, 
then navigate to endpoint, then to policy management. From policy management, we select profiles. And we will be presented with the screen where we can see the default security profiles. In addition, we can also create a new security profiles and customize them to meet the scenario that we are looking for. In order to do so, we click on new profiles and we can start customizing a new profile. And that's what we are going to do right now. So we click on new profile. We'll be presented with a screen that's going to ask us on what platform we need to create this profile. In our example, we are going for Windows. So we'll select Windows here. The type of the profile is going to be malware as requested. So we'll go with malware for Windows. And at the bottom here, we see next. So we click on next. Then the first mandatory field is going to be the profile name. Let's make it demo, for example, dash M. This is for the malware. It's very recommended to have description, so it will be identified for you in the future. So let's have this as a demo. Then we'll start with the configuration. It is divided into parts. These parts are the protection modules within the profile. So the first requirement for the first protection module, which is the portable, executable, and DLL examination, we need to apply these requirements. The first thing, we need to have the action to block. This is the default. So if you click on the drop down, you will see the action. We have the block, report, or disable. So the block is the default one. So we're going to select this one. The second requirement, they're asking us to exclude a path. So we do have the option to exclude a specific module from doing an examination, either here for this example on a file folder path or on sign or specific signer. So we can add whatever we need to exclude either on the signer or on the path. In our example, we will use the path for demonstration. So we are adding this path. That means wherever in the user one in this path under the user one, it's not going to be exampled by this specific module within the profile. So we click on enter. So we see the path right here. We click on the space. And now we have this path right there. The next requirement, it's asking us to quarantine malicious executables depending on wildfire verdict only. So we'll see the option here to quarantine malicious executable. The default is to disable. If we click on the drop down, we will see three options. The first one is the disable, which is the default. The second one is to quarantine file based on wildfire verdict. The second, third one is to quarantine based on wildfire and local analysis verdict. So in our scenario, we are going to choose to quarantine based on the wildfire verdict. So we choose this one. And this satisfies the requirement for the first part. The second part, it's asking us to report on office files with macros. So we can scroll down to the office files with macro. The default action is to block. Now we need to change this one to report. Again, that's a use case. It's not any best practice. That is just for demonstration to show the options. So please keep this in mind. Then the third thing is asking us to enable the weekly scan. Just worth mentioning here, we can navigate the modules and the option within the profile either by scrolling down or by clicking on the option at the left menu here. So let's do this one through the second way, which is clicking on the menu. So it's asking us here to do the endpoint scanning, the periodic scanning on each Sunday. So let's go here to endpoint scanning. If we click on that one, that's equivalent to scrolling all the way down. We will see the option for the initial initiating, initiating local scan from the users or the periodic scan. In this case, we need to enable the periodic scan. So the default is disabled, so we'll click on Enable, and we'll be, uh, we'll be seeing the options to select when we are going to run this one. So we're going to run this one weekly, as per the scenario, on Sunday. And that's going to be enough for us to finish the first requirement. The fourth requirement is asking us to leave everything on the default configuration. So that is going to be it for the malware security profile. The next thing, we're going to click on Create at the bottom. And this is going to show us that the security profile is created. Now, if we just filter on the name, that the name is demo. That is going to be our security profile that we just created for the malware. We can click briefly here to see the summary for the profile, or we can hit right click and see 
the options for us on the profile we can edit the profile save it as a new delete it or view any policy rule if it was populated into any policy rule now the second requirement is to create a new agent setting profile so just here keep the demo so we do have now the malware profile here and this is the description that we just created so the second requirement is to create the agent setting profile the same way we would go to add new profile we are creating this one on the Windows platform, so you have the option to choose the platform. In this case, we are going for Windows, so we can create one policy. Agent settings, because that is the tab that we are going to create. And the same way we can click on Next. We can go for the mandatory field here, that is the demo. A for the agent settings profile. And again, this is a demo. So that is the first part. The second part is to follow the requirement for the profiles. In this case, it's asking us to enable the Cortex XDR Pro agent capabilities. And as we mentioned before, we can either scroll down to the option that we're going for, or we can click that one on the left side menu. In this case, let's go to XDR Pro endpoints, and we are going to enable this option. This option is disabled by default, so we'll go ahead and enable that one. And that satisfies the first requirement. Second requirement, we need to enable five days delayed content download. So we'll go down to content configuration, and we are go for the default option is the immediate. So if we have a requirement to have delayed content download for the content to allow, we can select delayed and it's asking us for the number of days. In our scenario, it is five days. The third requirement, we need to enable the immediate agent auto upgrade to the newest agent release, including the maintenance and a new feature release. So under the agent upgrade, it is default, by default disabled, so we'll uncheck this one, go ahead and enable it. With the options that we will have here, that is the latest agent, and that is the default one. We do have two options. This is the first one, and that is the default. The second one, the only maintenance release. This is for the maintenance releases within the agent version that is currently on. The only maintenance release in a specific version, this gives you more granularity to choose what specific version you are going to. If you are, for example, 7.4, 7.5, 7.6, so the agent will be upgrading within this major version. In our scenario, we are going to choose the latest. And this will suffice and achieve those requirements because we are leaving the code for the remaining configuration. And then we're going to go ahead and click on Create. And we will get the success here. That's mean the profile was created. Uh, let's see this one as well with the demo. So we do have now two profiles created: the malware profile and the agent setting profile. We can, for either of them, we can see the brief summary under the tab here under the column under summary column. And if we need to go for more details, we can click right click and start editing that one without doing any changes if we would like to. And that is for the first part for creating the security profiles. Now the second part, we will go ahead and take those profiles, create a new security policy and populate these profiles and apply them to endpoints. From the same page that we are here at the top, we see the policy rules. We click on policy rule and then we click create new policy. Now it's asking us for the policy name. So let's have some consistent naming here. We'll say demo P for policy and the platform here. We are creating this one for Windows platform. So we can go ahead and check Windows. And the description does not be the same. This is a demo. So we know what we are going. So for the profile, it's only asking us to populate these two security profiles that we created. So we are leaving the rest of them on the default. So we created the malware one that we call it the demo malware. And we created the agent setting profile that we call it also the demo agent setting profiles. We are leaving the rest for the default. In other use cases, you can create all these security profiles, customize them and have them security policy. But in order for us to speed up the process on the recording, so we're going to have this one for these security profiles. Once we are done and populating the security profiles that we are looking for, we're going to go ahead and click on next. Now we're going to choose the target. 
The third requirement here is asking us to apply to any Windows endpoint that has the name Windows 10 in the endpoint. So we can create this with a filter under the endpoint name. The filter that says contains, and we can put here Windows 10 based on the requirement. And we will apply this for these two endpoints. And those are the endpoints that we are applying the security to. So that's going to be our target. We click on next. And then this will give you a summary for the policy that you just created. At the left side, you will see the first part when we created the name and description where we identify the target. And this is the platform. And on this side also, you will see the security profiles that you populated. This is the malware security profiles, and this is the agent setting profile, demo M and demo A. If we are good with that, you can go ahead and click done. If you feel like you need to do any changes before you click done, you click on back, and then you can do any changes you want. So if we feel comfortable with that, we go ahead and do done. And this will create a security policy for you. Something really important here that once you create the security, policy or your edit security policy, you will need to hit save in order for your changes to take effect. So we need to click here on save. And you'll be lucky it's saving. Once it's saved, you will be having this message that says policy rules updated successfully. And this way you will have that security tool already in place and now it's active. One thing important for the security policy profile or security policy that it follows an order from top to bottom. So if you have the security policy at the top, this is the one that's going to be taking effect. If you have more, more than one, you can move them and you can change the place if you want to change the order. So those are movable if you can go up and down. But that's one, one important point to remember. For the part of verification and troubleshooting a security policy, you can click right click on the security policy and you'll be presented with options to either disable it, delete it, or to see that policy details, or if you wish, you can edit it, or you can save it as a new and start creating a new copy of it. In this case, so let's go ahead and see the details for the policy that we just created. So we will see that we have that agent settings, that's the demo A for the agent that we created, and the demo M for the malware, and we left the rest on the default. You can quickly examine the agent setting profile that you created the same thing for the other profiles like the malware here as well so you can make sure that you applied the configuration that we did in our case we applied or we enabled the xdr endpoints we also did change some on the upgrade that we have the immediate upgrade for the latest version and we also did some changes on the content upgrade when we have the delayed five days for that one we just make sure that's applied and yes it is applied if you wish to see the profile and go and pivot from there, you click on the view, and this will take you to the page for the security profile itself, where you can do any changes if you wish, and then once you're done, you click on save. And this is it for the security policy part. The same thing for the security profile. You will have the option to either edit the profile or save the profile as a new or delete it. Now, after this one is populated, you can see the usage count is says one before it was saying zero. That's mean. This profile is being used in one security policy. In order for you to see that security policy, you click right click on the profile and go for the option that says view policy rule. And then you can do the verification or the troubleshooting that you need on that one. This is going to take you to the page where we just landed there for that security profile. It's going to put that agent setting profile that we created in the filter. So you will see it here if you scroll to the right. You will see what exploit profile you have, what the malware profile you have, what the agent setting profile, and etc. And you will see also the description that we identified. And with that being said, this concludes our video and demo for the security profiles. Thank you.